What's up? It's Mike Adam. My name is Jim Shear. And we do a little show called Gimme Five. I'm excited about this topic. Jim picked it and it took me way back thinking to uh, like the first cassette I ever purchased. It was Spin Doctors. It was the one on the cover where it had that like swirl or whatever. Uh -huh. I forget which one that was, but I was like, wow, that was the... That was the first tape I ever purchased. <laughs> and then after that, I think I got a Chili Peppers one. So anyway, our topic today is greatest things about the cassette era. Give me five. We did this with CDs. Yeah. And I knew that you grew up listening to CDs. And I was worried about this because I thought, did Mike Adam listen to tapes back yeah, yeah. in the day? It was, I, when I did you make the crossover? I was right at the tail end of cassettes. So it's nice. You know, I, I, I grew up knowing uh, a little bit about it, and then obviously CDs, CDs. were right there, and um, you know, so. And now MP3s, yeah, <laughs> digital files. So number five for me, mystery tracks were a mystery, and this was the only format where you could have a legit mystery track. Right. On vinyl, you could see that there was something extra at the end. On CD, you would say, well, why is this song 18 minutes long? <laughs> Same with an MP3. Why is this song 18 minutes long? And yes, you would have a song at the beginning and a song at the end and 13 minutes of dead space. Right. But this was the only format where you could have a legit mystery track. And sometimes you wouldn't even know there was a mystery track. You would go back to side A and then your friend would tell you, dude, there's a mystery track on that album. Yep. Number four, this format supported the album. On vinyl, you could click from song to song, you know, take the needle up and down. On CD, you could skip around. But with this, you had to rewind and fast forward to get to the next song or get to the song four tracks later. And at one point, you thought, that's too much work. I'm just gonna listen to the album. And to this day, my favorite albums in life are because I was forced to listen to the album on cassette. That's true. That's such that's such a good point, Jim, because now today uh, that would force artists to make better music, mm -hmm. I feel like, because now think about it, you know, they, some of these artists put out the albums, they got two good songs. Imagine doing that on tape, if you'd you have to it, it just got too much too much work yeah. to fast forward and rewind. And you had to come strong on the A side and the B side. Number 3, portability. I loved running with my Walkman. It fit right in the palm of my hand. And you could run with the CD player, but even if it had an anti-skip system, it would still skip. And I, and I like things too, I like, you know, vinyl was big, CD was a nice square, but I just love the, the you know, the portability of a cassette. Number two, accessibility. Okay. So when you were recording a mixtape back in the day, I could get a snippet of you talking to me. I could go to my TV, hold up a recorder, uh, sample a commercial. Yep. I could tape songs off the radio. I love the accessibility of cassettes. And then when the CD came along, you had to have a computer right. to make a mix. I didn't have a computer, so I didn't make a mix CD well into the 2000s. So I love that this was user-friendly. If there was a DJ on the radio, you could tape some of him talking, you could tape your favorite song. He's like, hey, later this hour, we're gonna premiere this song. I would tape it. Yep. And you would have it before it came out at the record stores. And uh, the number one thing that I love about the cassette era, the mixtape. There is no other music format uh, since then, or whatever they invent 20 years from now, that will tell a friend or someone you have a crush on that you love them. The way you assemble the mixtape, the little snippets you would put in, the artwork on the mixtape. I have one right here. Where's my uh? But it's the it's the work that you put into it. You would yeah. color a nice little cover. Look it. Where's uh, Agent Mainframe from my friend Troy? He had one here. This one of the greatest mixtapes of all time. Um, Agent Mainframe from DJ Smooth. And when I received this in the mail from my friend Troy, I thought. Wow. This man loves us, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be on a one-hour joyride. Yeah. Mike, give me five. Man, that was such a great list, Jim. Uh, so for me, at the number five spot, uh, again, like CDs, I feel like you it gives you that feeling of having a collection, mm -hmm. and you know you don't have that with MP3s, obviously. And uh, yeah, you know you could just have one of those uh, cases, almost <laughs> like the matchbox cases yes. for your tapes, and bring it around and be like, look at my collection of tapes and that has been lost now. Mm -hmm. um, at the number four spot, <laughs> the rewind sound. 
Do you remember the Yeah. I used to love the rewind sound when you're like, oh, that song was so good. I want to hear it again. All the way mm -hmm. back, the rewind sound. I miss it. I haven't heard it in a very long time. <laughs> uh, at the number three spot, uh, kind of going with your uh, jogging uh, point that you made, the yellow Sony Walkman. Yeah. The, it was. I think it was like yellow and charcoal gray or whatever, mm -hmm. and everyone had that. If you didn't have that, you weren't in the cool crowd, and it was like my pride and joy at the time. <laughs> I love that Walkman. Um, at the number two spot, kind of going with what you said too, um, I remember off the radio, I would always tape, like if a host said, we're gonna world premiere this new one from, mm -hmm. so I would get uh, excited about the build up too. And you sit right there by the pause button. Right, and I <laughs> I would wanna record the, uh, the jock as well, because it was like a moment, it was an event, and then that radio jock was almost immortalized because mm -hmm. uh, anytime I would play back, I heard, whoever whoever it would be. Um, and at the number one spot, making a perfect mix. The effort and work that goes into it and you have this like masterpiece once you're done with it mm -hmm. and you're ready to share it to the world. I mean, there's, there's no feeling like that. You would spend hours, countless hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With the perfect handwriting. Sometimes you would accompany that with a note like, hey, here's why I'm putting this song on and that song on. And yeah. You lose something in the digital era. I mean, things are convenient. I love that I can have thousands of songs on my iPod shuffle, but you do miss something with the cassette. Oh. So please share your feelings below. And until next time, for Mike Adam, my name is Jim Shear, and we will see Yins later.